Wait, are you like the head of the fairies or something? Oh, hardly. No, I'm your... I'm your godmother. I have a fairy godmother. Episode 401 begins, uh, we find out later, a year after the end of episode 312. Sookie finds herself at uh, in Fairyland, and she doesn't know why she's there. She knows that her fairy godmother has brought her there. We meet Sookie's grandfather, who is uh, magnificently played by, by Gary Cole, and it's a very touching uh, reunion because she never got to say goodbye to him. 20 years. I can't understand how. I swear, I've only been here a few hours. Sookie gets out of Fairyland and ends up back home, finds out that she's been gone a year, her grandfather dies on return, and she spends the episode trying to figure out what in the world has happened during the year. I thought you were dead. Well, I knew you weren't dead. Eric, not now. I never lost hope. Everyone who claims to love you, they all gave up on you. I never did. The big question has always been, is Sookie going to lean towards Bill or Eric? And up to this point, it's been very clear that her allegiances have been with Bill, and that Eric has been basically a seducer who's been trying to get her interest. Eric has held out hope, which certainly speaks to his own um, connection uh, to Sookie, which may be deeper than, um, than we thought. Your Majesty. Good evening, Miss Pellin. Bill seems to have hardened quite a bit. He's taken on the mantle of King. He's calculating cold, hasn't lost his warmth completely, but you can tell that he's either playing cooler or he's distanced himself emotionally because of what happened with Sookie and because of what happened with the Queen and Russell Edgington and everything that went on in, in season three. Action. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eric Northman. I'm a tax-paying American and small business owner in the great state of Louisiana. I also happen to be a vampire. The world, which was just beginning to warm towards vampires, is now suddenly very frightened of vampires again. And this has created a challenge for the American Vampire League. They are uh, utilizing every uh, publicity tactic they can in order to win back the hearts and minds of the uh, American people. We're always more than happy to serve humans here at Fantasia. And I don't mean for dinner. Lafayette and Jesus have gotten involved with some witches. Is this your room? Yeah, this is my partner. Lafayette, this is Katie. <clears throat> Finally broken down, and I've been trying for ages. We were playing with the witches, making them, on the one hand, seem kind of like goofy hippies who have uh, kind of a new age and, and Wiccan philosophy. And on the other hand, you can tell there's something pretty nefarious going on with them. Restore within her the spirit of life, evil cowardly mores, immortuous, and return her to the plane of the living. Marnie, we haven't studied this. We have a character named Marnie who's introduced in, in episode one here, and she's a very meek, mild-mannered, uh, middle-aged woman whom we barely get to know before she becomes possessed by dead people. Big green, we left a the witch storyline is really interesting, and you know, I, I definitely want to see where that's going to go. And also, this connection between Bill and the witches, which comes clear that he has a spy in there with the witches. 